On a rather cold April day in the year 1900, a group of dairy farmers met at a schoolhouse to discuss the building of a creamery. It was unanimously agreed upon that a cooperative would be established and a building erected next to the train station in the small rural community of Scottsburg, Nova Scotia. A pond was built in the village next to the creamery to serve as a source of ice during the winter months for their early methods of refrigeration. It also helped beautify the location for what was to become the largest dairy production in the Maritimes for the next century. Around this time, farmers in the surrounding region were also busy establishing separate creameries. Brookfield, Tatamagouche, Truro, to name a few. These would later be amalgamated and brought under the Scotsburn brand, but I'm getting ahead of myself. By 1906, 10,000 pounds of butter were being produced in Scottsburn, but this was an operation at a loss. Farmers were delivering their whole milk for the creamery to separate the fat and return the skim milk to the farm. This resulted in sour milk on many occasions, and the farmers began hoarding back their supply. In 1907, Hugh McLeod visited a creamery in Wisconsin to learn about a method of separation that was implemented which meant that farmers separated the cream themselves to deliver to the creamery. This revolutionized Scottsburn's production. By 1912, they were making almost 450,000 pounds, and by 1920, the estimated production was 600,000 pounds. A local farmer named John McKenzie told me about the early days of the dairy. I'm calling myself a 43 model, but I can't remember much till about 1950, but I can remember 49 or 50 that the road got paved through here. I know electricity now had been here since about 1930, I think, of what I understand. But we only got in December of 1949, and over and down the Stewart Road all got it with our crossroad school, my local school. Well, I went starting 49 to school, so I went the first four months without electricity when I started to school. And, and they got it a little earlier, but we got it about the 23rd of December. So that's what you'd call the Christmas present, I guess, in 49 was, was uh, electricity. But 1950 brought a lot of changes, a fridge and, <laughs> and other things to the farm. Well, when it started back 1900, it was to get a little more revenue for the farms when they thought of getting the creamery. And the countryside was full of farmers. That was one of the main occupation, I guess you'd say, in the country, except the, there was always a blacksmith and a store owner, merchant. Well, I think they started making ice cream about 1946, 47, somewhere. It was a smaller, ice cream smaller, but the main part was the creamery to make butter. And I know the, well, I know there was at least three trucks it went out, well, five days a week or six, I guess, then gathering cream. 1966, they got into the milk business and they bought dairies, so uh, the cream shippers then were getting, well, the bigger ones would convert to fluid milk and, and the little ones, well, a lot of them, they kept on the way they were until their, the owner more or less retired or so. But, the, but it, it was a community then where the farmers more or less depended on Scottsburn for their feed and their uh, other supplies. And well, it was pretty much the major major dairy in Pecticana. Well, it became the only dairy, but then after it was the only dairy, I guess farmers of that come in for, thought they should have competition. So uh, they, but uh, Scotsburn was always the main product you'd see on the dairy shelves. There'll always be a Scotsburn community. Now, whether it'll get another industry or something that took the place of what the dairy was at one time, well, I guess time will tell. What began as a small operation had within decades become a very successful enterprise. As John McKenzie explained, ice cream was added to their butter production and became a great hit for the creamery. If you were to travel to any ice cream outlet in the province today, 
the likeliest name you'll see hanging on the wall is Scottsburn. By the 1960s, Scottsburn had become the Scottsburn Cooperative Services Limited, and they had a wide range of dairy products, including their own milk lineup. The purchase and amalgamation of other dairies was in full swing, and production was occurring in multiple locations with plants in Stellarton and Lionsbrook. The Tatamagouche Creamery was purchased in 1968, and dairy production along the north shore of Nova Scotia was now under the control of Scottsburn. For over a hundred years, this dairy cooperative produced tons of dairy products in their Scottsburn facilities. And then in 2014, the bulk of their production was moved to Truro, while the administration offices were kept in the village. This move appears to have been a major turning point in the history of the company. It wasn't long after this that their milk production facilities were sold off to Saputo Incorporated for a reported $61 million. In 2016, facilities were closed in Newfoundland and New Brunswick, and then towards the end of the year, the announcement was made that the entire Scotsburn brand was to be purchased by AgriPure, a Quebec-based cooperative. I spoke with Jennifer McLennan, a former employee and a local to Scotsburn, who actually wrote the book that inspired much of this content, about Scotsburn's waning years and how the village has changed since the dairy relocated and was eventually sold. I'm going to say it was 2014, I think. So we had sold, or well, Scottsburn had sold the dairy division to Saputo in 2014. And then we ran it as the ice cream company until 2018. Um, well, 2017, I guess, is when Agapure then came in and they ended up purchasing um, at that particular point in time. And, uh, you know, there's lots of summations as to, you know, why something like that occurred. Um, I think, you know, a variety of it probably had a lot to do with the fact that when, you know, the fluid milk was certainly providing a lot of cash flow because fluid milk is something that turns over quite readily. Um, when we lost that portion of the business and it became just the ice cream, it became harder to have that cash flow there. But it was also, it's, it was the dairy industry itself. It was, it was a changing industry and it was something that was potentially bound to happen. I, you know, I remember talk at one point in time of Scottsburn and Farmers had been talking about the possibility of joining together and perhaps had that happened, then it may not have ended up being the way that it did end up. But I suppose they're like two hockey teams too, they were always competitors, so it was harder to do so. But I'm really pleased that Alan was able to take over the creamery and turn it into the museum to keep so many of those memories alive. And so many of the people within the community have so many more memories even of the dairy than I do. Um, but there's, there's just something about this area that's got so much history and for it being such a small community to have had such a major operation. I mean, you know, we, we dealt with national companies from all around and, um, you know, we had great partnerships with the Sobeys and the Loblaws and all of those different companies and produced many products for them over the years. So I think that, you know, says a lot about the people that live within this community um, and their heart and their soul here and so, yeah, I mean, it is disappointing, but I think I, I never give up hope that it will one day again be even more thriving. I mean, I don't find it a non-thriving community. I mean, certainly, yes, there's been lots of changes over the years, but the people themselves haven't really stopped. They, they keep kind of going. It's hard to understate the importance of what this dairy meant to the province. For over a hundred years, it brought dairy to the Maritimes. But today, however, if you were to visit the small, rural village, you will not be met by any large-scale production. A museum now sits in the building that was once the creamery. Alan Fraser has kindly given me a tour of his vast collection of historical artifacts in his museum called A Walk Through Time. It is well worth a visit to learn more about the agricultural past of this region and the lasting impact the dairy has made, not only on this village, but throughout the Maritimes. <laughs>